Hello, and welcome to the West Virginia State Governor's Mansion. My name is Gail Mansion, and I am the First Lady of West Virginia. And I am so proud and honored to welcome you to your home away from home. This beautiful home was designed by architect Walter Martins. The home was uh, built in 1924, completed at the end of 1925 in time for the inauguration at the beginning of January uh, 1926. The floor of the foyer is a beautiful uh, Belgian black marble and Tennessee white marble. The dual staircase is a great example of Georgian architecture of which this home is built around. Uh, the beautiful chandelier hanging is a new gift from the Greenbrier in 2007 as they were doing some renovation and it was still under the ownership of CSX. The wall is a beautiful damask stencil that most people who come into the home believe is a, a wallpaper or a fabric. But it is a triple coat starting with a base coat, a gold glaze, and then the damask stencil over top. Uh, the, the stencil was designed and actually retired uh, right after it was used for the foyer and upstairs balcony uh, so that this stencil will not be seen anywhere else. It is a one-of-a-kind uh, finish for the foyer and balcony area of the governor's mansion. And in fact, if you will follow me upstairs, we will look at the first ladies gallery that is housed on the balcony. Here at the top of the staircase on our balcony of the second floor, you can really appreciate the beauty of Georgian architecture where you have a balance of everything that is on one side is replicated on the other. And so as the staircase comes up to the left and goes around the balcony and then down on the right side allows not only a very practical purpose for many people to come through the mansion and have plenty of space to enter and tour and exit without crossing paths or getting in each other's way. I was really dismayed when uh, the governor and I toured the mansion for the first time and realized that it, nowhere in the mansion was there any representation of the great first ladies that had served and lived here and before this was built in other residences in the state of West Virginia. And so having found a collection of beautiful portraits of our first ladies, we decided that the, the balcony on the second floor would make a great gallery. And so beginning with our very first first lady in 1863, behind me to our left, we travel around the balcony in a chronological order through all of the first ladies that have served once and a couple even twice for the state of West Virginia. And so now, if you will follow me down, we will go down and begin our real tour of the first floor public space of the mansion. We are standing in one of the most elegant rooms of the mansion, and that would be the drawing room, where you truly see exemplified the beauty of not only the fabrics on the furniture and on the window treatments, which were researched and represent fabrics that would have been used in the early 1920s when this home was built. Uh, one of the examples is the armchairs in which the fabric represents one of West Virginia's most popular wildflowers, the lady slipper. And in fact, all of the accessories in the, this room are antiques of not only great quality, but of great value. The painting on the walls in the drawing room were done by John Canning and Associates of Connecticut. And actually, while it is done through a shadowing, looks like panels on top of panels, which only, again, adds to the elegance of this area, along with the custom-made carpet, which brings out the drama again and the colors that were used in the drawing room. And now we will sort of move from the drawing room back to the more cozy and warm library. The warmth of the library is due in large part to the beautiful butternut wood that is used throughout this room. It is a native West Virginia wood and came from Pendleton County. 
At the time the home was built, of course, it was more prevalent. Now you wouldn't see an entire room done in the butternut. But the bookshelves back here, which houses uh, something that I thought would be very unique for the West Virginia mansion, all West Virginia books, either by West Virginia authors or books about the culture, land, or people of West Virginia. The art that you have seen, not only in this room, but in our other rooms that we tour, are in great part on loan from the Huntington Museum of Art. It allows us great flexibility and also the museum to showcase some of the beautiful art that they house there. From here, we're going to cross over the Great Seal of West Virginia to enter the back hall and talk a little bit about a more private area of the mansion. The back hall represents an area that we use to go up and down to our personal quarters, the back staircase, but it also houses a break front which has a lot of history of West Virginia. Many of the china patterns used by former governors, crystal patterns, and also silver goblets that were a gift to the state by individual counties in West Virginia. It is a great place for our tours to stop and allow people to see some of the beautiful glassware and dishware that was actually made here in West Virginia. It also leads us to our private dining room, which sits on the back of the mansion. This private dining room represents the one personal area that is part of the public tour of the, the governor's mansion. This dining room affords us the opportunity to host uh, friends and family and also is used for the governor to have uh, luncheons with committee or staff members. But it is also affords a beautiful view into the mansion courtyard, the walled-in garden, which is beautiful at every time of year here in West Virginia. And from this informal setting, we will now walk into the formal dining room of the governor's mansion. The formal dining room of the mansion allows us to entertain heads of state, dignitaries, and family members at those more formal special occasions. Dominating this room is a beautiful 18th century 14 foot long table and sideboard that originally belonged to U.S. Senator Clarence Watson of Marion County. 24 people can be seated at this dining room table at one time. And the table sets on another beautifully made, custom made rug for the mansion, which is adorned by our beautiful state flower, the rhododendron. Certainly my favorite among the custom carpets that are in this home. And now from here, we're going to go into the ballroom of the mansion. One of the most interesting aspects of the ballroom is the white marble mantel from an old Irish castle, which was designed by Robert Adams. And above the mantel hangs a portrait of Minnie Watson, who is the wife of U.S. Senator Clarence Watson, who previously owned our dining room table and sideboard. Another interesting feature of the ballroom is that when it was a, the house was originally built as a ballroom, it was not furnished. But to make the house more functional and practical all of the year, uh, at some point the furniture was added and we again uh, reupholstered the furniture in fabrics that relate to the time period when the home was built. And from here we go out to the beautiful sunroom of the mansion. The sunroom represents one of the most delightful rooms of the mansion primarily because of the view of the not only the front yard of the mansion but also the beautiful Kanawha River, the University of Charleston across the river. But all, even though it is more casual and delightful, there is still the elegance of the red grass cloth that adorn the walls and also the beautiful fabric in this room which represents one of Dorothy Draper's last designed fabrics, Dorothy Draper being the original decorator of the Greenbrier, but again uh, it, exemplifying the beautiful rhododendron on brown. And so this room becomes a tribute to West Virginia in many different ways. 
This completes our tour of the public space of this beautiful, stately Georgian red brick mansion, which interestingly enough, was built at a cost of about $200,000. We certainly couldn't do that today. This beautiful mansion is monitored and protected by the West Virginia Mansion Preservation Foundation. And all of the renovations and interior design seen here today was under the auspice of Vivian Woofter, a native West Virginian who now serves the U.S. Department of Interior in decorating U.S. embassies around the world. And with her, her colleague Pat Bibby, also a native West Virginian who is an interior decorator in her own right. It has been a pleasure and an honor to offer you this very special tour of the West Virginia Governor's Mansion. We certainly hope as your travels take you around and through West Virginia that you will come back and visit us often. Thank you.